Hello, and welcome everyone to another episode of Alliance Live. My name is Olivia Sharkey, and I am the service designer within the ALICE program at the Alliance. I'm joined today by Caroline Lawrenson. Caroline is the managing director of TL Tech and has been partnering with us at the Alliance on a UK research and innovation funded project called Democratizing Access to Community Services, or DAX. The DAX project aims to improve the accessibility and user experience of one of the Alliance's programs, ALICE. ALICE, spelled A-L-I-S-S, -S, stands for a Local Information System for Scotland, and the program allows people to find and share information about local and national services, groups, activities and resources throughout Scotland, all of which help people to live well. At TL Tech, Caroline has previous experience developing KindSpace, a holistic well-being skill for Amazon's Alexa. From this work, she's been able to bring in a wealth of knowledge to the DAX project about developing Alexa skills, and we have collaborated on creating a new voice activation version of Alice called My Scottish Community, which is now live on Amazon and available to use on any Alexa devices or apps. So Caroline... I'd like to take us back to the beginning. How did you and your company, TL Tech, join up with us at the Alliance for this project? Oh, thank you, Olivia. That's such a nice intro as well. It's really exciting to be here in person as well. Um, given that we've we've spent what, the brooks of the last year working together uh, remotely, these opportunities are always welcome. Um, so, yeah, so actually the, the story of, of us working together began quite some time ago, even before last year. And I remember in 2019 in Aberdeen, going to one of the Alliance's Discover Digital events and meeting the team. And I was just going as a kind of everyday uh, consumer who was interested and, and wanted to find out more about innovation in the health and wellbeing space. And it was such a great opportunity to meet different organisations and see see what was happening in that space and um I guess I didn't think too much more of it after that and then our paths crossed again I think it was in 2021 um at a webinar and somebody from the alliance was speaking about the work that you do and then I was like oh well, I, I know a few guys and then I was like oh yeah Alice and by that point in time we had started to do more with Alexa. We had launched our Kindspace application and my head was just like, what if Alice could talk? What if Alice could talk? That would be so amazing. And so I got in touch um, with yourselves. I met Chris Mackey. And so we then together started to look for opportunities for funding, um, which, as you can imagine, is not an easy uh, task. But we, at the time managed to uh, successfully apply for an Innovate UK grant, which was just phenomenal. I mean, the, these sorts of grants are really difficult to, um, you know, to have a successful application. So we were delighted with that and really encouraged because the, the assessment panel there, they I think they really saw the potential in what we were doing with voice and how it opens up accessibility how it really supports things like digital literacy. Um, and as part of that project, we also collaborated with Tactum, who are the main tech support for the existing Alice system, the website, the database, and the kind of API connection into the data. And another organization called Elemental, who are a social prescriber. Um, so yeah, so together, we kind of started on this journey a big part of what Innovate UK wanted to see was that we were engaging with the end users of the application and really understanding their needs and, and in employing different co-design approaches. So for me, that was really exciting to be able to work more closely with the end users and, and build up those relationships. So we held our first workshops in October and that was really about understanding requirements, testing some of our assumptions. Um, you know, Alice is called Alice and, and we had always assumed that it would be called Alice. And, and what we quite quickly realised from speaking to people is not everyone pronounces Alice the same way. They might spell it out as you did in the introduction or they might pronounce the vowel sounds differently. And so that made us kind of really reevaluate and, and try and make a, or 
come up with a, a solution that gave us something that was uh, not misinterpreted, couldn't be um, mistaken for something else, but also was descriptive of what it did. That was the other feedback that came back was that, you know, the name Alice makes sense when you know what it means, but it doesn't necessarily immediately make sense um, in, in an audio world when you don't have any other cues. So, yeah, we did we did a lot of workshops and we prototyped different ideas and we did different testing. And towards the end of last year, we, we were getting to the stage where we were ready to launch or ready to make the application live. There were some hurdles. Uh, but thankfully, we managed to work through all that and we were able to launch the new My Scottish Community app in February. So that is now available for anyone to use. It's super easy to access. All you need to do is say, Alexa, enable my Scottish community to your smart speaker. And then that's you got it on all of your devices. So there's no like downloads or anything complicated like that. Um, And since we've launched, we've been doing further testing and engagement. We've had some really interesting sessions with people with sight loss. And again, that's given us way more insights around accessibility and things that we want to do to improve the user experience and we're just continuing on that journey now and you know discovering more about how people use Alexa and and how we can create a a way of empowering them to get the information that they need through a voice interface. That's fantastic I, I think it's so wonderful how naturally this developed and how it really has been slowly but surely building up over the last few years into essentially with DAX project and where we are now and it's it's quite exciting to have it actually live on Amazon at this point. I think you gave us such a brilliant overview but I want to go back into some of the details of what you were speaking about. I suppose first it might be good to get a bit of an overview of, of what my Scottish community is, how it kind of functions on on the Alexa. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So when you open up my Scottish community for the first time it will ask you to grant some permissions. And the reason that it does that is, and and this is my way of explaining it, so anyone who's used Alexa before will know how frustrating it is when it doesn't understand what you've said. And so the last thing that we wanted was for people to have to spell out their postcode and then be saying A and B and and Alexa not picking up those um, uh, those words so what we decided instead to do was have a, a permissions system where we can ask Amazon to share your contact information so it shares your postcode once you've um, once you've granted the permissions then we can see your postcode without you having to relay it as a as a audio instruction um, it's Still not the most elegant of solutions, but with all the testing that we did, it, it felt like that was the best workaround for just now. I will say that Amazon have made some updates recently and we're looking at simplifying that because at the moment when you grant permissions, you actually have to do that in the smartphone app rather than with your voice. So I was over in America in April and had a really good meeting with the Amazon team and said, top of my list is please you know make make that functionality available to us so hopefully very soon you'll be able to say yes I'm happy to share my postcode information and then you basically then can search for whatever support that you need so using keywords you can just say things like walking groups or dementia uh, cafes or or anything that that you're you're thinking of and what Alice or the my Scottish community system then does is it goes into the amazing Alice database and it pulls out the relevant information because some of the searches would come up with lots of search results what Alexa does is reads out them in batches basically so it'll give you three results And then if you want to see more, then you can say that you'd like to kind of browse further into the list. So we're trying to design it so it doesn't overwhelm people with with too much information. And once you've found an entry that you're interested in, you can basically say that you want to 
have a look at it. It will give you the contact information and then it will also ask you if you want that information sent to your phone. So in the Alexa app, you can actually like save, they're called information cards. So you can save them in your phone and then you can come back to that information later if you want. Um, so we've tried to keep it as simple as possible, uh, but still lots of work to do in terms of making it as accessible as possible and making the search as relevant as possible as well. So what we are seeing with, with looking at how people are using the live application is people are naturally wanting to search things like uh, yoga classes for new mums in Drum Chapel. You know, they're, they're, they're searching with much richer information and lots of... Um, you know, like a location, who's it for? Uh, and um, at the moment, the way that the, the app is structured, we're, we're not able to, to pull out all that information. But that is also the next thing on our, our list to address. Yeah, absolutely. It's. I think we're both, we've talked about how glad we are that we've got this kind of, I guess, minimum viable product yeah. and that it is usable but that it's going to continue to be a journey. I think we found that both on the Alice website and on the new skill, it's going to keep developing. As Caroline described a bit about how my Scottish community currently works, we wanted to take a pause in our interview to demonstrate how the skill works for you. My Scottish community can be accessed both on the Alexa app downloaded on any smartphone or on any Alexa device. The skill will search for support based on the postcode you provide on your Amazon account. You will need to grant access for the skill to use your postcode on your Alexa app. Once you are in the skill, you can adjust the radius of your search and the type of search to local, national, or everything to suit your needs. At the end of a search, you can have a details card sent to your Alexa skill with the contact information of whichever service you have selected. Today, we will use an Alexa Echo Show to demonstrate some of these features. To open the skill for the first time, you can say, Alexa, enable my Scottish community. Alexa, open my Scottish community. Say search to search the Alice system or settings to change your search configuration. Settings. Your search radius is currently set at 10 miles and your search type is set as everything. You can use the touch screen to change the settings and tap the save button when you are done. Or say radius to change your radius setting, or type to change your search type setting. Radius. Your search radius is currently set at 10 miles. You can choose from 1 mile, 5 miles, 10 miles, 30 miles, or 60 miles by saying 1, 5, 10, 30, or 60. Which would you like? 5. Your search radius has been changed to 5 miles. You can say search to perform a search or type to change your setting type. Which would you like? Search. What would you like to find? Arts and crafts. I found seven results. The first three are number one, what we do, young people, community inclusion and families. Number two, arts and crafts group. Number three, outdoor play. Please say the number of the results you would like more information on, or you can say next results for the next set of results. Number two. You selected arts and crafts group. Phone number 01414295370. Email address admin at nanmakai.scot. Information last updated the 21st of February 2023. Would you like a details card sent to your Alexa app? Yes. A details card for Arts and Crafts Group has been sent to your Alexa app. You can say, back, to go back to the results list, search, to perform another search, or exit to end this session. Exit. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of how my Scottish community works. Now let's get back to our interview. And I know you touched on this, but I, I suppose I'd love to talk a little bit more about that human-centered kind of process that we've been already using in the development of the skill, but we could continue to use to keep making it better for people. So do you want to speak a little bit more about the process that you took and, and how you find, found working more directly with people? 
through development? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we did take some of the learnings from when we we built our first voice application, Kindspace, and and I think the great thing actually about voice is that you can prototype things quite rapidly, and you can also create quite high fidelity prototypes that are, you know quite realistic and engaging for people without necessarily having to code a lot up front. And what that allows you to do is kind of gain really early insights into what what works, what doesn't work, what people like, what they don't like, um, and really test some of your assumptions. So we we actually like to use the Google Design Sprint methodology. Um, there's a really fantastic book, um, and and it kind of gives you like a a five day structure. So the idea is that you can do this sprint in a week. I think the caveat to that is there's couple of weeks of prep before you do that like you, you can't just start on day one you, you know you have to have to do some prep but we use the um we use the the tools within there and you know some of the kind of fundamental sort of strategic aspects of it we didn't do it in a week we actually spread it out more it was closer to two weeks and that gave us just a little bit more time to do the prototyping um, because we wanted to create something that was more uh, more realistic and, and had a little bit more features to it than you might maybe do on on a kind of first iteration. Um, yeah, so we used the Google Design Sprint methodology. We engaged with lots of different stakeholders, um, including individuals and organisations that um, support older adults and also adults with disabilities. Um, so we had uh, people like Alzheimer's Scotland, Scottish Care, and a few other organisations like that. And then you know, people people from my local village as well, which was really lovely. I think when you're a business owner, it's so nice when you share your journey. So like I'm active on LinkedIn and things, and you know people take an interest in that and want to be able to contribute to that and, and help you to create you know, your vision, basically. So I've had ever so many people, you know, reach out and, and help us on this journey that I would never have expected. So building in the open is a good thing. And I, I, I wonder if people don't maybe do that enough. So like, for example, we set up a, a little web page, landing page with information about the project where people could kind of sign up to the mailing list where they could get information. And on that site, we also shared you know, our progress and um, the workshops that we did, we wrote up like minutes of meeting, like a kind of overview of, of the findings and, and shared them all openly. So building in the open is definitely one of my top tips when it comes to this kind of thing. Because um, you, you'll be surprised at how willing people are to, to share their, their thoughts with you. Yeah, it's been really wonderful to see just how transparent you've been throughout the process and really engaging in that wide range of ways from in person to online to and like surveys and workshops and focus groups. It's been a very well-rounded experience as far as I've seen. And it, it's great to have people involved. I mean, because we're designing for people, aren't we? So it's wonderful to see that. Um, I've, I've found that it's been a really huge learning curve, probably especially for me as a new person to the world of Alexa, but I'd imagine for yourself as well. I think in particular, the Alice database, as we know, is very huge, but there's a difference designing for something visible versus designing for something audible. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit about how you found that challenge of, of changing re- red text into an audio file that someone will be listening to. Yeah, it's, it's a great observation. And it's something that like I didn't appreciate until we started to build our own voice applications. And, and with Kindspace, we have our own curated database. And when we did our initial prototyping and testing, what we quickly found was if, if we if you read out too much text, you lose people. It's too much information and they get overwhelmed. And, and we kind of found that the sweet spot is about 200 characters. Once someone's listened to, to, to 200 characters, you've lost them. And then when it comes to giving people choices, try and not give them more than like three choices because if you give them more, they'll, they'll forget what the first one was. So it is it is a huge challenge, but it's also a huge opportunity. Because what I would say is that throughout 
this journey and the kind of engagement that we've done and the things we've discovered, a lot of the insights we're finding are equally applicable to something that has a visual interface like the website because simplification, it can only benefit people. You know, simplifying the, the language that's used and we, we've talked about this a lot, haven't we? So instead of location, saying where, and instead of demographic, saying who. And I think that's been so um, so insightful to, to find out how, how people engage with things differently just by a simple change in language um, and, and kind of seeing that in, in the, the workshops and things that, that we've done. Um, obviously, the ALICE database was never designed with this intention uh, of, of having it as an audio-based system. And we have genuinely a lot of work to do to um, to adapt it so that it, it does work better for Alexa. Uh, oh, there's so, ever so many things that you know, funny things that we've discovered along the way. And Alexa doesn't always pronounce things like Scottish place names correctly. Um, it doesn't always transcribe things correctly. So a, a recent one for me, looking at some of the data of. Uh, what people are searching for. Someone had searched for something in Car Luke, but Alexa had transcribed it as literally the words car and the word Luke. And so that's not going to find anything in the database. So so we have lots of challenges when it comes to this, but I, I also think huge opportunities as well. Absolutely. I think it's quite exciting to see um, where we can go with it and how we can continue to improve it. I'd love to hear a little bit about what you think the potential benefits of using my Scottish community could be for people. Yeah, so you may have gathered, I really love voice technology and Alexa's. <laughs> I often say to people of all the tools in the smart home toolbox, the voice assistant is by far the most powerful. That is like one of my catchphrases now. Um, I, th- I think they just have... They have so many practical uses, but they also have a really beautiful way of, you know, it's a conversation. I think people connect with it and and there's so there's a growing body of evidence that shows uh, speaking to an Alexa or a voice assistant every day alleviates loneliness. You know, even a kind of simple thing like using Alice or checking the weather or um, adding something to your shopping list, you know, it's. It's it's incredible actually that you know that that kind of technology can have such an impact. Um, Alice itself obviously does such an amazing job of signposting people to real world connections, so encouraging people to engage in their communities, encouraging people to you know look after their health and well being, and empowering them to be able to do that. So I just think it's it's such a wonderful resource. And by bringing it into the voice space, it now opens up that access to far more people. And, you know, some of the, the testing that we did, we, um, we, we've we got kind of anecdotal evidence of, of people saying, well, it's so much faster than typing. So, you know, even something like that in terms of the convenience factor is, is a benefit to people. It's, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm just so excited to be able to, bring this kind of resource to, to the Scottish community because I think it really helps. It helps everybody. Absolutely. I, th- I think we've spoken a little bit about how this could be really supportive for people who might have a visual impairment or mobility issues, but ultimately it's something that could be used by everyone. And I think that's such an important point to highlight. It, we've aimed for being accessible to anyone around Scotland or, you know, if anyone's interested further beyond that. I think there's a lot of potential within voice and, and you've begun to explore it a lot of this but I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you think maybe the future holds within digital within voice activation perhaps just in general within AI in the health and social care sector yeah uh, it's a great question I I did a I did a presentation not long ago for the third sector lab they have like a tech for good um series that they they run and um that gave me the opportunity to kind of reflect on on some of the hype, I think, that's been going around. So obviously everyone's really excited about 
uh, generative AI and chat GPT and um, it's, it's something that we now get asked a lot about but I then always kind of say to people to I think it maybe goes back to what we said before about keeping things simple as well and really thinking about the use case and and just because something's kind of new and shiny don't try and like shoehorn it into fit and when it comes to technology development I'm actually a big believer in kind of starting with that minimum viable product and then adapting it based on what people are telling you that they want um, or or that will add the most value because you can't always see that initially and certainly with the other things we've built that that has, has held true for us um, so conversation AI is a massive field it's really exciting actually to kind of be at the beginning of that journey and and kind of looking at new innovations and we certainly will be looking at generative AI and how we can incorporate that into what we've already built but I think we'll do it in a more kind of stage wise process um in the smart home space and the kind of uh health health in the home space I think what's really exciting is this kind of move to what I kind of describe as technology less interfaces so it's where you can have technology in the home but you're not necessarily aware of it and the way that you interface with or the way you um, use it is is more using your voice using gestures it having a sense of where you are and how you're doing and then the home responding to it so um, I think in some spheres they, they call it ambient computing, but I think that's a really exciting space and it's something that we also look at on our kind of smart home side of the business. So it's uh, it, it, it all just blends so well together, like all the um, innovations in terms of voice and what's happening in the, the kind of tech sector when it comes to IoT and the ways in which our homes can support us. Um and, and we're adopting them as consumers. You know, today, most people have these sorts of devices in their home. Um, I think I've, sh- I've shared before some information about some of the latest statistics. So Ofcom did a survey towards the tail end of last year. And in Scotland, 43% of adults have access to a smart speaker. That doesn't necessarily mean that they, they utilise it to its full capacity, but at 43%, it was a much higher percentage than I had, had originally thought. Um, and I don't know if maybe the pandemic has had some influence on, on the uptake. But interestingly, um, of that 43%, 87% is the Alexa devices that they use. It is only 9% of Google. So I think that, that again, is, is, is quite a significant trend when it comes to technology adoption and, and, and and how we're how we're building solutions because a lot of people ask me, oh, are you going to build something for Google? And and then I, you know, I have have this information to, to hand to say, well, it's a very small population. That, that's not to say that it isn't an important population, but it's probably lower down on our priorities. Um, yeah, and, and conversational AI. The thing that really um, fascinates me is. You know, the, the idea that there are use cases we haven't even thought of yet. You know, there's there's things that these technologies can do that, that we've not even thought about. Um, I mentioned that I went to America earlier in the year and it, I went to a big voice technology conference and they were even talking about uh, wearables that you can wear in your ears and glasses and you know, other ways that you can interact with technology. So I think all of those things are, are really exciting. Um, and becoming a bit more mainstream as well when we think about the different consumer products that are available. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think exciting is the right word. But I, I think you're right to highlight that you have to do it cautiously as well and making sure that you are continuing to keep people at the centre of these things and not just doing them for the sake of doing them because it's a shiny idea, like you said. I think you've done a fantastic job today giving us a great picture of my Scottish community. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been such a pleasure having you on. Oh, thank you. 
If you want to find out more or would be interested in being part of research or design opportunities to help shape the future of the ALICE program, please check the description to find our email and some useful links. We hope that you can join us again for another episode soon.